Have you ever increased the size of the disk attached to a virtual machine on Proxmox only to find out later that the change had no effect? Then you probably missed a step. Hello Geek Army, on and back again with one more video. Few days back, I published a video on how to install Windows 11 on Proxmox 8. Soon after publishing that video, I realized that I did not allocate enough space for my Windows installation because I was going to install a lot of applications, I allocated only 64 gigabytes. This is such a simple problem, so like any overconfident home labber would do, I went to Proxmox GUI, selected the disk, increased the size from 64 gigabytes to 72 gigabytes, rebooted the Windows Virtual Machine, and Windows would not see the increased space. This is not a Windows only problem. I faced this exact same thing with Proxmox backup server, which quickly filled up the 512 gigabytes I assigned to it. I increased the space, but Proxmox backup server would not see the space. By the way, if you're into Proxmox, then you should be using Proxmox backup server because it offers many advantages over the regular backups that you can make using the Proxmox GUI. If you're interested in seeing a video on it, let me know in the comment section and I will plan to make a video on how I use Proxmox backup server. Okay, back to the problem. If you're using Proxmox or plan to use Proxmox more in future, then I guarantee you, you are going to face this disk space problem. Today, let's see how to properly increase the size of a disk attached to a virtual machine on Proxmox. Okay, here we are in my Proxmox virtualization environment. I have the Windows 11 virtual machine right there, 201. You can also see my C drive, which has 64 gigabytes of space that I assigned to it. This is the disk that we are going to expand from 64 to 72 gigabytes to accommodate all the different apps that I want to install on this virtual machine. So let's see how to do that. So if I move over to the hardware tab right there, we see the disk that is attached to the C drive. So I'm going to go to disk action and resize. Here we specify the additional amount of disk space that we want to assign. It's not the new disk space, so we're gonna say eight because we wanna go from 64 gigabytes to 72 gigabytes. So let's resize it and there you go, we're done. Now it's up to 72 gigabytes of space. Now this is where I would reboot Windows and check and Windows would continue to show 64 gigabytes of space and not see the extra eight gigabytes of space that we just added. This is normal and it's because we are missing one more step. If we refer to the Proxmox documentation right here, there are actually two steps in increasing the size of the disk. The first step is size of the disk itself, which we just did. And the next step is to let the partition also know that there is some extra space that the partition can use. And that's the step that we typically end up missing and we're gonna do that right now. How do we do that? We need a partition manager to do these activities or these changes offline. Therefore, we're gonna use system rescue CD. What you see on the screen right there, I'll put the link in the description below. Download it from any of the two sources that you can download it from. I got it from SourceForge and it's already on my system. So I am not going to download it right now. So let's head over to Proxmox and to the storage location where you typically upload your ISO files to. Here I am in local. I'm gonna hit upload and select the system rescue CD that we just downloaded. Now, while we're at it, we're also going to ensure that the image has not been altered from the time it was created by anyone. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna use SHA256 checksum. So if I click on this link here, I will get the key that I can use for this validation. Ignore the last part of it. So if I go back to my Proxmox, and pick SHA256 and paste this key and upload it. Proxmox will upload the ISO file to the location. Once done, it's also going to ensure that the ensure the integrity of this file. So let's give it a few more seconds for this step to complete. So, and there you go. The check is complete. The ISO file has been uploaded. The next step is to boot from this ISO file. Now, how do we do that? So if we go to Windows 11 um, virtual machine and to the hardware tab right there, we're going to add a new CD drive. 
it's IDE2, that's fine. It doesn't really matter which one. So where did we download it in local? And I'm going to pick the system rescue CD that we just downloaded. So add it. And now we have it right there, or right there. So in orange. So, and then let's also go to options and make sure that IDE2, which is where we're going to boot from, is also listed in the boot order. Just because we added a CD to the boot order does not mean we'll be able to boot from it. In fact, when I did the same thing for my Proxima backup server, I had no problems and I was able to increase the size of the disk. Windows, however, Windows 11 threw an error. This is because of the secure boot option, which did not allow me to boot an ISO file that has not been signed. So for this, we'll have to go into the BIOS and make some changes so Windows can ignore this part and let us boot from the system rescue CD. So let's see how to do that. I have found that the, even in situations where just a reset or reboot would do, shutting down the whole virtual machine has been the most successful way to do it for me. So I'm going to shut down this virtual machine for the changes that we just made to take effect. So let's wait for the machine to shut down and then continue. So the virtual machine is off right now. How do we get into the boot? This can be a little bit tricky. As soon as you power on the machine, you will have to hit the escape button right around when the Proxmox logo shows up. So we're gonna do that right now. So I just hit start right now and I'm gonna start pressing the escape button. There you go. So. I entered the system BIOS and I'm going to demonstrate the problem that I just mentioned earlier. So if I go to boot manager, I do see the DVD ROM right there. When you don't shut down your virtual machine, like we just did, this normally does not show up. That's problem number one. We shut down the virtual machine. So we had no issues. We're seeing the CD ROM or DVD ROM to boot from. But when I click on that or select that, nothing's going to happen. We're going to keep coming back to the same menu. This is the problem caused by secure boot. So we will have to go back, hit escape, go to device manager and into secure boot. And there you see attempt secure boot. We're going to hit the space bar to uncheck it. It says configuration has been changed. We'll have to save it. But also it says we have to reset the platform for this to take effect. Personally speaking, resetting, which I will show has has not worked for me. Shutting down, as I mentioned before, has been the best way for me. So we'll, we're going to do that right now. But before that, let's hit F10 and we're going to hit F10 and we're going to hit Y to confirm that. And now let's get out of this. As I said, if you go down to this drop down menu, there is a reset option for me. It hasn't worked. So I'm going to stop the whole thing right there, which is like powering off the whole system. Now it's off. I'm going to start and I'm going to do the exact same thing we did last time. Hit the escape button. So we enter into the bias menu. There you go. I am back again. So now if I go into boot manager, I should see the DVD ROM and we're going to boot from that. And we see the boot options for the system rescue CD. And we're going to pick the default one, the first one and let it let it boot to the command light. Now you're going to see some gibberish and pixelation and all of that stuff. I have no idea why this is happening, but in a few seconds, we should see the command line. And there you go. Now that's gone. We are at the command line for system rescue disk and you can see some options right there. We're going to type in start X to start the desktop environment. We just did that. So we should see the graphical desktop environment right there. Now, if you are not familiar with the Linux world, Gparted is an awesome application that allows you to manage your partitions. So that is built into this live CD. So right here is the icon. You can also go through, find it from the start menu right there, but we're going to click this one and this will show us all the disks that are attached to our system right here. Now, this is a Windows system. There's EFI partitions, all kinds, rescue partitions and all of that stuff. In fact, this right here, 63.13 gigabytes is what we want to expand to 72. And the 8 GB of unallocated space we just added is at the end. Unfortunately, there is a recovery partition right in between. This is going to stop us from expanding the 63 GB to 72 GB step. It's a problem only for uh, Windows systems mostly. When I did the same thing for Proxmox backup server, I did not have this issue. Going back to Windows right now, now, do I really have a need for a recovery partition? I don't think so because I'm on Proxmox. 
and all my virtual machines and containers are set to backup on a periodic basis. I don't really have a need for recovery partition. So in this case, I'm going to delete it because if I don't, I cannot really resize this partition. The unallocated space has to be adjacent to the partition that we are going to expand. So in this case, I'm going to select the partition and hit delete. Now that's gone. You can see that unallocated space is now up to 8.76 gigabytes. So we're now going to hit this, select this one and resize it and point at the arrow right there and drag it all the way to the end. Now that's been resized. It's closer to 72. It's a little bit less. That's fine. But here you go. You have the space that we wanted. So we will check, hit the check mark right there to apply all the changes. These changes should apply. It, everything seemed to have went without any problems. Let's close this. And now we are going to shut down one more time. I do not like uh, rebooting. So I will shut down, wait for the machine. We're going to also remove the CD drive. We just added because we don't need any more. So let's right click on that one or check, highlight that one, hit remove. And now that's gone. Now let's go over to console and start our Windows machine. And once we get to the desktop and open up our Windows Explorer, we should be able to see 72 gigabytes. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna log in here with my ID, uh, with my pin, and let's open this one up. My, this PC, there you go, 72 gigabyte. We're almost done, but there are just a few more things that I wanted to mention before I get to that. If you liked the video until now, please hit the like button. It would really motivate me to do more. Also subscribe to my channel so you get notified of all future videos. Okay, back to the topic. Now, if everything went smooth so far, great. But one thing I forgot to mention is that always take a backup of your virtual machine before you start any kind of operation. I hope you did. If you haven't started the process yet, great. Make a backup before you start. Now, as we just saw, the process is not too complicated, but it can be a little bit tricky for Windows because of that recovery partition that's not you know that's interfering between the unallocated space and the space that we want to expand so once we delete that everything went goes smoothly and as i said on my proxmox environment i have the windows virtual machine set to back up on a pure basis so i don't really have a need for that recovery partition on a linux machine virtual machine this is not really a problem as i said i just expanded the proxmox backup server disk and i had no issues with it so this would be the end of the video. I really hope this was useful for you guys. If it was, I will continue to see you in my future videos. Thank you for hanging in so far. Go be Carmen.